ourselves. And you, we live, we move, and we have our being. Thank you, Lord, for your life-giving love that you demonstrated toward us. Most of all, that we have salvation and deliverance and freedom from the wrath of God. Lord, thank you for intervening between us and our Creator, who because of our sin says that we deserve death and damnation. Thank you for shedding your blood to save us and set us free. Lord, we ask these blessings as we go forth, let your word go forth, touch hearts and minds, that we'll not only be hearers, but doers of your word. Thank God. Amen and amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Bethel Temple and to those of you who are online, amen. We are so thankful for the songs of praise that have gone forth. Man, Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, you've yeah. done so much for me. Amen. And therefore, I can't live without your love. I can't live. Yeah breathe without your love. I can't move without your love. One songwriter, Michael W. Smith, said, this is the air I breathe. Your very presence living in me. Man, so we thank God for each of you. Man, let's turn to the word of the Lord. Man, in Hebrews, the ninth chapter, going to be reading verses 27 and 28. Very short. This is a lot shorter than most of the times that I'm reading. Uh, but this is the word that we're going to today. It's powerful in and of itself. Amen. The, the word of God is, uh, is better than uh, dawn or tide soap. Huh? But see, I bought and uh, we bought, just like a lot of other people, we bought the, the dollar store <laughs> dishwashing liquid that, you know, for one dollar, it was like you get almost a gallon. And, uh, and we, we discovered, I discovered the difference. We got a little bottle of Dawn, the blue bottle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not even, maybe it's 16 ounces. But I discovered that one or two drops of that can wash a whole lot of dishes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see people shaking their head. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because as the commercial comes on, don't pay for water, you pay for soap. Thank the Lord. I'm not here doing a commercial for Dawn or for Tide, but there's a reason why they are more expensive because a, a small amount is very powerful. Just one or two scriptures are greater than Dawn soap. Mm -hmm. It's concentrated. Yes. Uh huh. Thank the Lord. Yes. That wasn't the message. But Sister Barnes, that is a message. Yes. Yes. Amen. So we thank the Lord. We're going to the word of the Lord. Again, we're praying for uh, First Lady Hill. Ask the Lord just to continue to touch and strengthen her body. Amen. Even though she's physically been unable to get up and, and, uh, and get out. I think she tried one day last week and she paid the price for that, even though she was trying to do things she had to do, felt she had to do. She discovered that there's a whole lot of things she can do on the phone, and she has been ministering uh, almost nonstop, amen, to our family and such as we look forward to uh, memorializing her brother, uh, my brother-in-law, Elder Tracy Phillips. We thank the Lord for it. Thank you for your your words of encouragement from each of you, Bethel Temple, and, and not only seeing about um, her uh, uh, physically, that concern, but also, amen, just uh, the uh, encouragement with 
plants and flowers and food and such and phone calls. Man, those are such a great encouragement. Thank God for your um, your godly seed sown. Not talking about money, talking about that godly seed you sown with words of encouragement and acts of encouragement. Amen. God knows how to multiply your seed. So. Yes. Amen. Um, we're going to read from Hebrews 9 and 27. It says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Verse 28, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of men. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without or outside of sin unto salvation. Yes. Amen. I want to talk to you about the rules of the game. Mm. The rules of the game. Um, I shared with you a few years ago Bethel Temple about the concept that life is like a game and imagine you had a situation where you're thrown into a game. You didn't choose to be participating in it, whether the game is basketball or football or whether it's tetherball, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it is, you've been thrown into the midst of this game. But the problem is, as you've been thrown into the midst of this game, you haven't been told anything. You weren't told how the game started. Yeah. You haven't been given the rules of the game. You don't know the purpose of the game. Uh, you, don't, you don't know the, the meaning of the game. You don't know uh, that, that if it's basketball, uh, that the purpose of basketball is not to score touchdowns. If anybody tells you you have a round ball and a hoop with a net, um, and, uh, and then people tell you, well, the way you play this game is you kick the ball and you throw touchdowns, then they messed up, they, they messed up the game for you. And yeah. in many in life are thrown into this game of life, but they've been thrown in without knowing the rules of the game. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what the game is about. So I want to talk to you about the rules of the game then go from there. Um, when I was much younger, about the age of my young granddaughter here, um, under, well, around 10 years old, under, um, I prided myself, Sister Ashley, I prided myself of being an outstanding marble shooter. <laughs> Because I didn't play like some people. They hold the marble, they put it right here, on, and then they flick the marble forward like that, you know, go like that. Oh, no. That's, you know, that's, that's like people who play pool and go like this. I turn my knuckle sideways. <laughs> Brother Dorsey, Minister Dorsey. And when I shot the marble with my thumb, I had power. And the marble would be spinning sideways. And it would stick. When it hit the other marble, it would stick in its place and be spinning. And so I call myself an outstanding marble player. And I had quite a few marbles. I had a nice bag of marbles, Joshua. But um, the problem is, um, I guess my legend um, 
was spreading around Carversville in Bakersfield. <laughs> and uh, a friend of mine, we'll call him a friend, lived the street over uh, named Willie Owens. Um, he liked to come over my house and play marbles. But I didn't really like to play marbles with Willie because <laughs> Willie believed in flexible rules of the game. Mm -hmm. That's a nice way of saying he believed in cheating. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for Willie, you know, there, there was, when you start the game of marbles, you had to declare certain things. Mm -hmm. And you would say, free man's world. What that means is that you could basically call the rules as you go. <laughs> and one of Willie's favorite rules to call was grab dates. What that means is that all of a sudden, everybody just grab as many marbles as you can from out of the pot on the ground. There's 10 marbles, if you could grab them, just grab dates, and that was it. Grab dates was, unfortunately, part of the marble culture. And so I did not like playing against Willie because he always knew how to change and stretch the rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Modern man and unregenerated man has rejected God as the creator of life and as the giver of meaning to life. This should not surprise the Christian because if there is no God, then our existence has no meaning. <laughs> um, if life has no meaning or purpose, Brother Jonathan, then the rules have little or no value to the participants. Christians must understand that the world rejects God's rules primarily due to a lack of understanding that only God can give meaning to the game. Only God gives meaning to the game. Contrary to man's natural understanding, Rules are not intended to spoil the game, mm -hmm. but to make the game more enjoyable. The rules are not the game, but they are a guide to the game. When God delivered Israel out of Egypt and out of Egyptian bondage, he brought them to Mount Sinai. Notice what God did. He delivered Israel out of Egypt, and then he brought them to him. And he brought them to Mount Sinai to begin a relationship. This relationship would be defined, and it would be regulated, and it would be enhanced by a set of ten rules. We call them the Ten Commandments. Yes. Notice the rules were given after they had been delivered. Yes. God didn't give the Ten Commandments to Israel while it was in bondage in Egypt. Mm -hmm. First he set them free. Then he gave them rules as part of the relationship. Yes. Mm. We sometimes try to enforce holy rules on unholy people. But you can never write enough rules yeah. for someone who doesn't have the rule giver in their heart. Yeah. You, got, you have to have the rule giver down on the inside. Yeah. Mm. And that's why the Lord gave Moses 10 rules or 10 commandments but eventually, he had to direct Moses to write 600 more rules and regulations to help enforce the first 10. Mm -hmm. 
And that's because you can never write enough rules. Yeah. You can never write enough. Theoretically, all of the cities, all of the counties, all of the states in the United States should not have to have any more rules and laws and commandments than the Constitution. Theoretically. That's the way that should be. But we know there are, shall I say, millions of rules that have been written, and they constantly come up with more all of the time because people do not have the rule giver down on the inside. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Later, God, after giving Moses to write 600 more regulations, he used Isaiah and Micah to reduce it back down to three rules. What were they? Love mercy, do justice, and walk humbly before your God. And then finally, Jesus, in the New Testament, he reduced the rules down to just two of them. And it was love the Lord with all of your heart, and then love thy neighbor as yourself. He reduced it down to two. Why could he reduce it down to two? Because he said all of the laws yes. depend on and they emanate from these two laws. The first part of the Ten Commandments were expressed in the statement, love the Lord thy God with all of your heart. That was the first one. And the first four commandments of the Ten Commandments all talk about your relationship and our relationship with God. Yeah. The second part, commandments five through ten, are described by what Jesus said, love thy neighbor as yourself. Yeah. That's why you don't lie on them, you won't commit adultery against them, you won't steal from them, you won't covet, you won't do all of those things. But every rule has a purpose and it conveys a, an essential concept that's essential to the game of life. Yeah. And the overriding concept behind each of the commandments is the word sacred. Sacred. That's the concept behind each one of those commandments that God gave Israel and he's given to us. The word sacred means connected with God or dedicated to the things of God or to religious purpose and therefore deserving respect and reverence. Yeah. And that's why, as he said in the first commandment, your understanding of me as God, I am the Lord thy God. That understanding is sacred. Your worship of me is sacred. Commandment number three, your use of my name is sacred. Mm. Number four, setting aside time for me is sacred. Yes. Number five, respect for parents is sacred. Mm. Number six, respect for life that I've given is sacred. That's why you don't commit murder. Number seven, respect for marriage and sexual relationship is sacred. Number eight, respecting someone else's possession. God says that's a sacred thing. Mm -hmm. Number nine, speaking the truth. Don't lie, it's sacred. Mm -hmm. And number 10, contentment with what you possess, not being covetous, is sacred. Everything is sacred. Mm, yes. We don't have two separate lives as Christians. Mm. Everything is connected to God. Yes. God gave us rules to enhance our relationship, not to hinder our relationship. Yes. He wants the rules written on our heart. Yes. That's why God in this the game of life he's let us know that he has some rules including 
God has referees in the game. You don't get to do as I did when we played basketball. I call my own fouls. Oh, yes, that's the way you do. When you're just playing one-on-one -on -one, over at Frank Age by yourself, I mean, you don't have a referee there. So everybody, you call your own fouls. And of course, depending on how badly I wanted to win, you looked at me funny as I was shooting. That's a foul. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you touched me as I went by. That's a foul. But God has His own referees. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And He also uses, along with those referees, God one day is going to use instant replay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, He is. The Bible says one day we're going to have to stand before God. Yes. Along with that, you might want to challenge the referee's call. Mm. But in the end, God is going to show you the replay. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says every mouth will be shut. You'll be like on, on tennis. If, if you think that the ball was out of bounds, <laughs> you can challenge. And they have a computer replay. Mm -hmm. And they'll show you in slow motion the ball touching right on the edge of the line. Mm -hmm. And your mouth is shut. Don't play by your rules. But learn God's rules yeah. and accept a coach that won't uh, uh, challenge you and correct you. Don't get in your mind that I'm not going to accept anybody that, will, that challenges me and corrects me. Because mm -hmm. some people have that in their mind. I don't want any coaches. I don't want any referees. I want to call my own fouls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't fight with the referees. That's part of the rule. In some, in not some, but in all sports, you get kicked out of the game. Yeah. Mm. Don't wait until the last second mm. to try to win the game. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to come to that again. As part of the rules of the game, Every game has a beginning, and it has a purpose. It has rules. And then every game has an ending. In Hebrews, we're reminded that it is appointed unto man once to die. Yeah. Yes. Then comes the judgment. Yes. Hmm. The game is over, but then there will be a declaration of who won. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of, of, I believe it's been, as a matter of fact, it's been, Lord have mercy, um, almost 50 years ago, but um, I think about, well, let's go back just 40 years ago when instant replay became a common thing in most sports. Uh, it changed the attitude of a lot of the players and coaches in sports. Uh, previously, players and coaches had to reluctantly accept whatever decision that the umpire or referee made. <laughs> Whether it won the game or, or the first, last decision, they had to accept it. But in 50 years ago, I do remember this, in 1972, the Russians defeated the United States in basketball. It was the first time ever. And this was against college players. 
our college players have always defeated the whole world in basketball in the Olympics. And so um, the Russians defeated the United States on a last second, and it was literally one second. The ball was thrown from one end of the court all the way down to the other end of the court. That's 94 feet. And the Russians caught it and made a shot. The United States players were so disgusted by what had happened that they refused to accept the second place medal. They refused to even accept it because they believed that they had been cheated. And later on, videos, whatever those were, mm -hmm. revealed the mistake. But Brother Doris and Minister Doris, it was too late now. It was too late. The game was over. The Olympics were over. In tennis, computers can show that the ball bounced in or out. And in track, they can decide with the computer a photo finish race. Baseball, however, is the only sport that doesn't participate in that way. There are no instant replays in baseball. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only sport because baseball is supposed to be America's game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Baseball is the only one that relies on an umpire or a a referee to call a runner safe or to decide whether it's a strike or not. Mm -hmm. But instant replay ensured that the game ending would not be questioned. That's what instant replay was for and that's why it's valuable. It makes sure that the end of the game cannot be questioned. God uses referees as I said before, but he will use instant replay one day. There is an appointed time, yes. and then comes the judgment. Yeah. The end of the game, death, is appointed. It is unavoidable. I don't care how much you and I take care of ourselves. We can, we can exercise and be in shape like Jack LaLanne. <laughs> I know y'all don't know who Jack LaLanne is. Yeah, I, I, I know some of us older folks know who Jack LaLanne is, okay? Was, okay? You can could, you could exercise and, and be in condition like Jack LaLanne, but you will have to deal with death. Today, we have birth control and we have pest control, mm -hmm. but we don't have death control. Mm -hmm. In Ecclesiastes 12 and 6, it states, the silver cord is loosed and we fly away. We will all keep a personal, unavoidable appointment with death. And it says, it's appointed unto men. Yeah. So all of us who are born of woman, and that's all of us, will experience death. Yes. Mm. Death comes to every gender. Yeah. All 25 of them that they claim. Mm. Mm. Other than Jesus, only Enoch and Elijah but none of us are Enoch and none of us are Elijah. That has already been done, okay? If you are alive when Jesus returned and you aren't right with God, you'll be, as they say, out of the frying pan into the fire. The Bible says that it's appointed unto men once to die. You only die once. There's no second chance. It's one and done. When the world declares you only live or die once,
they usually mean that you might as well live recklessly. They're talking about have as much fun as you can because you only live once. On the contrary, we should make sure not to waste our one life and one death, but live and die soberly yes. in this present world. Yes. Rest assured, there is no reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus said you must be born again, he was speaking of spiritual birth, not natural birth. Yes. Then not only that you only die once, it says, and after this, in other words, death is not the end. This fact lets us know that life is not fatalistic. Life is not meaningless. There's a whole lot of people that believe that life means nothing. That when you die, you just die. It's over. And nothing else happens. And they have a fatalistic mindset. And therefore, they believe there is no right or wrong because you can do whatever you want to do. When you die, it's over. Mm -hmm. mm. For Christians who have trusted in Jesus, death is described as a temporary state. Mm -hmm. One part of the scripture in John 11 and, and 11, it says, is described as sleep. Mm -hmm. And beyond death, there is an inheritance imperishable and reserved in heaven for the Christian. Then it says, after this it says the judgment. So death is the door to your destiny. There is no second chance after death. But Christians don't have to fear this. Roman 8 and 1 declares there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes. And so for a person who is not in Christ Jesus, that should be their question. How do I be get into Christ Jesus? Hmm. Those who refuse to, to accept or receive Jesus Christ, the Bible calls them ungodly and it describes them as unprepared for death. They have, as the scripture says, everything to fear. Mm. The word of God lets us know that the end of the game has been appointed. And after this, the judgment. So you and I are no exception to this game-ending rule. You only die once, and death is the door to your destiny. I want to encourage you, whoever you are, to don't listen to what your friends might advise you about the rules of the game and how the game ends. Your friends might tell you you can play the game and by your own rules. You need to discover your own truth. People are saying that all over television. You live by your truth. And they commend people, you discover your truth. Mm -hmm. Some very famous people say that and live by that. Mm -hmm. Don't go by the truth that you find out there in, in others. Live by your own truth. Well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. Your friends might advise you to play the game of life by your own rules. Your friends might even tell you, you know what you need to do? You need to fight and challenge the calls and the decisions of the umpires and referees that God has placed in your life. God knows how to place umpires and referees. And we need to heed them and listen to what they have to say. But your friends will tell you, ignore the umpires and referees. Your friends might tell you that something else you could do is you can wait until the end of the game and you can plan to win on a last second shot. Like the Russians did. They didn't plan that. 
But some people are planning to win on a last second shot. As kids, we would practice that in basketball and in football. In football, we would call it a Hail Mary. And so for the, to, to win the, the end of the game, we would throw a long pass, tell everybody go out there and run and catch the ball, Joshua, with no seconds left on the clock. And you win the game on that last 75-yard bomb. Or either the, the basketball game is tied and there's only one second left and you shoot the ball from half court. Uh-huh. And as you shoot the ball, you stand like this. You finish with your follow through. <laughs> and you watch the ball swish through the net. And some people, because they've seen that happen, they think they can plan that. I don't know if there is a God. I don't know. But, you know, so I'll take my chances mm -hmm. right at the end. Maybe I'll plan a deathbed confession. Mm. Uh, but they don't understand the deathbed itself changes your mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't plan that. Yes. And some people have in their minds, I'm just going to shoot a last second shot. Or even on the last pitch of the game, mm -hmm. there are two strikes and there are three balls. It's the ninth inning. This is the last one right now. And I'm going, I plan on hitting a home run to win the game. Like Reggie Jackson. Google it. Some people, don't listen to your friends who tell you you can do a last second Hail Mary. A last second 50 foot shot. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you what might happen. Mm. First of all, you might miss the shot. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you are Steph Curry or Damian Lillard. Okay. I don't care if you're those. They don't shoot even 50% on those shots. They don't even make half of those shots. Thank the Lord. It may look like they make all of them. That's because you just watch the replays and the highlights. <laughs> That's all you watch are the highlights. But they can tell you they don't make most of those shots. Um, uh, Barry Bonds didn't hit home runs every time he came up. Mm. He didn't even get on base three, uh, uh, three out of the ten times that he came up. So he didn't hit home runs even that frequently. Mm. You might, on the last play of the game, you might end up missing the shot. Mm -hmm. Could be an air ball. Mm. Or you might step on the line, mm -hmm. the out-of-bounds line, as you shoot. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how pretty the shot was. I don't care how smooth it looked. I don't care how it swished. But if you stepped on the out-of-bound lines, the shot doesn't, doesn't count. Or you might just run out of time. Mm. Or maybe in baseball, you might just strike out. At the end of the game, there's no need of arguing about it because God has a high-tech instant replay. Mm -hmm. And he is going to show each of us, he's going to show each of us how we 
we are guilty, as it says in Romans 1 and 18, that we are without excuse. And the Bible says every mouth will be shut. So don't listen to your friends who are advising you on that order. As I close, you and I did not choose to be in the game of life. Mm -hmm. But we can choose to learn the rules mm -hmm. of the game and to live by them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You didn't choose how you were first born, but you can be born again. Yeah. Mm. And as you receive, if you will turn your heart and your mind towards Jesus Christ, then you get to experience deliverance from the wrath of God. And as a child of God, you can experience what the scripture says in Philippians 1 and 6. It says, he who began a good work in you, he will perform or he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You, you don't have to worry anymore about what the enemy throws at you in this game of life. Sometimes the enemy comes against you and it looks like the enemy is scoring all the points. Hmm. It looks like the enemy is making three points and just raining down three points. It may look like the enemy is throwing 75-yard bombs and scoring touchdowns at will. It may look like the enemy is hitting a home run every time they come up and the and the crowd will bring up a big roar when the three-point shot is being made. But understand, the game includes more than just one shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. There are people who it looks like they're doing well now. And it looks like they have the crowd with them. And it looks like that they are just doing whatever they want to do. But one day, the game will end. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a buzzer will go off. Mm -hmm. A bell will ring. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. A clock will make an announcement. It will ring. And if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, the Bible says, then comes judgment. As a matter of fact, all of us will have to stand before the Lord. But those who know the Lord as a Savior, they can stand before God not confident in themselves, but because Jesus Christ, the one who is the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, the one who is the head referee, Jesus Christ, the main umpire, he's the one that decides what's right and what's wrong. Jesus Christ, who is the commissioner of the league. Yeah, He's yeah. the one that made up the rules. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. He gets to decide. And he'll be able to say to you, if you're living for the Lord, if you've accepted him as your Savior, he'll be able to look at you and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter in to the joy of of the Lord. As we're standing here, the end of the game will come. Yeah. I don't care how long it looks. For some people, the game didn't last as long as others. Yeah. <clears throat> Their game may have only lasted a few years. Yeah. And for some, it, it looks like by natural Eyes. It looks like they're way ahead. It looks like they're ahead 50 to 20 mm. in a football game. It looks like they're ahead. It looks like they're winning. Mm. The 
But God is the one who makes the final announcements. We must be willing to stand and to understand that God is going to demand that we give an answer to how we live. I thank God that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which is lost. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior, you are lost. And there is only way, one way to be delivered and set free. Yeah. The scripture says in Romans, if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Then that doesn't mean that everything in the game of life is going to be fun and enjoyable. You may experience some, some injuries. You may experience some hurt feelings. You may experience some disappointments. But just know you have the victory in Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you today because you are in complete control. It may appear to others that we are losing the game, but I'm so glad, God, that you are sovereign and you're complete control of the situation. You decide when the game starts. And you decide when the game ends. And you declare the winners and the losers. Lord, in you, we thank you that we can have victory. You always cause us to triumph. Lord, outside of you, Lord, if we gain the whole world, we lose our soul. We are of all men most miserable. Thank you, Lord, for the life that you've given. Thank you for the opportunity to know you as a Savior. Touch the hearts and the minds of those who are listening to your word. Let them know that there's meaning and there's purpose to this life. Lord, give them a mind to seek you as never before. We ask these blessings in your son's name we Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you, Bethel Temple. You may be seated. We thank God for the word and pray that you have been encouraged. Amen. Life is not going to always be under our control in this life. <laughs> amen. We, we can't control the outcome in and of ourselves. But we know who has the victory and we put our trust in our confidence in you. God bless you. We have some announcements at this time. Yeah, we thank the Lord for you being in the house of the Lord. We pray that you're blessed uh, on this day. Amen. We pray that amen, you receive the word of the Lord. Amen. And take it to heart. Amen. We ask that you just continue to support this ministry. Uh, this work here at Bethel Temple. Amen. You can do that in part by giving online or giving. Uh, you can do that in person here at our service or online at, um, at btcogent.org and just click the online giving button. You can also give through Cash App at dollar sign BT Fresno. Also just ask that you continue to, to always uh, pray for this ministry. Pray for our pastor. Yeah, yeah. Pray for the saints. Amen. That yeah. God will uh, give uh, us direction that God will continue to uh, bless our pastor, anoint him for this work. Also, we just uh, want to encourage you to join us throughout the week for service, uh, fellowship, and on um, Tuesdays we have prayer at 7 p.m. That's usually led by our First Lady, um, um, uh, First Lady Hill, and it's an opportunity just for us to pray for and with one another to share what God is doing, uh, to share those praise reports. And then on Thursday, our pastor does a teaching at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. And you can watch that. You can share it. You can watch it again and again and again if you like. Uh, uh, it's on our BT Facebook.
Facebook page. And then on Sundays, we have our service in person here in the house of the Lord. It is a blessing to come to the house of the Lord. There's nothing like coming actually to the house of the Lord. And so we encourage you to come on Sunday mornings for Sunday school at 9.15 a.m. We have classes for all ages and our uh, Elder Paul Hill does a Sunday school review. And then at 10 a.m. we have a worship experience where you can come and praise the Lord. Yes. Uh, yes. Pray with one another. Yes. Amen. To hear yes. the word of the Lord that God has prepared just for you yes. on that day. Amen. It's a blessing when we can come and hear the word of the Lord. And so we encourage you to join us each Sunday at 10 a.m. Amen. Well, thank you. God bless.